Hey guys, Pilot Geek here, and this is my newest and tiniest rover yet, the Pilot Track Micro. This is the absolute smallest FPV rover I've made so far, and it tries to keep simplicity in mind. It uses dual N20 gear motors, housed in a 3D printed tub chassis, with stackable shelves for packing as much electronics into as tiny of a space as possible. It's designed to accept a 19mm wide camera, such as the Runcam Micro Swift or other all-in-one micro cameras with this adapter. Power is supplied by a small 1S LiPo pack under the snap-on battery compartment. So this is a lot smaller than my current Scout 32 chassis, as you can see. Um, it's very compact. There's a battery that goes in the back of half of this. And today I'm going to show you how it's all assembled. The build process for one cell LiPo power is very straightforward, though all electronics will need to support voltages between 3.3 and 5 volts for proper operation. Because everything will operate at the same voltage, we have no need for a regulator, and then we can use our receiver as a power distribution board. To save space, I ordered a D-pinned receiver, which I will solder directly to. To power the motors, I use these micro ESCs. Each motor presses into place, and then each ESC can be taped down. Optionally, there's an additional shelf, which can be placed in the lower chassis to provide additional space for electronics. With everything in place, we can close up the chassis, making sure to fish through the wires. Once we have the lower chassis closed up, I then tape down our receiver, taking note of which pins correspond to which channel. I then directly solder the signal wire, followed by the positive and negative to the corresponding pads on the receiver, using the aileron channel for the left motor, and the elevator channel for the right motor. On most Spectrum compatible receivers, these correspond to channels 2 and 3. The rest of our accessories will only require power, which we can take from any remaining channel. The outer set of pins are all common ground, and the middle set of pins are all positive. Our all-in-one FPV camera only requires power, so I solder the positive lead to any of the positive pads and the negative lead to any of the negative pads. Likewise, our LED headlight will be connected to any of the positive and negative pairs of pads on the board. Make sure to add a small resistor in line with the LEDs or you risk burning it out. A good value for a bright LED may be around 47 to 100 ohms, although I used a 470 ohm resistor to keep it running cool and to save power. Additional LEDs may also be added, with up to three in this chassis. Our final bit of soldering is the power connector, which will again be soldered to any of the remaining power pins. At this point, the wiring looks a bit of a mess due to the limited space, so here's a diagram showing how everything is hooked up. Once wired up, I secure any LEDs with a small drop of superglue. I then attach the camera mount to the front and screw it into place. The drive wheels slide onto the motor axles with a small set screw to ensure they stay tight on the shaft. The idler wheels use an M4 by 20 mm screw to mount. I recommend a small dab of grease to prevent squeaks and wear. Then the tracks are slid on and it's time for testing. Once everything is complete, we can turn it on and bind the receiver to our radio and test it out. To bind the radio, I plug in a battery while shorting the bind pin to negative with the tweezers. Once the controller is bound to the receiver, I then set up the controls. Standard controls will require Elevon mixing, which is simple to set up on most computer radios. One or both channels may also require reversing if the motor spins in the wrong direction. Um, there are a couple changes to this from what you'll see in the video because I recorded a lot of it at different times. Recently I developed some snow tracks for my Scout 32. I got the video for that linked below. And I actually took those changes and applied them to these tracks. So uh, in some of my earlier tests this wasn't the greatest at off-road because it would get things jammed up in the wheels. Um, but I think I have that mostly corrected now. Uh, also in the video, um, I did not have a bind button on here, but I decided to add a bind switch to the very front of here. Overall, the build does quite well for its size. It gets quite a long runtime on a charge, probably around 15 to 20 minutes on a 500 milliamp battery. Unfortunately, while it is small, it is much less capable than my larger rovers. One cell power just isn't quite enough for the torque and speed I'd like. It is, however, extremely simple to build. Adding a voltage booster to the mix would definitely make it a bit more capable. For putting around on a desk or in small areas, it does just fine though. Using my prototype build, I also found it's great for messing with cats. I currently have a very limited production of these pre-built, but I also have the STL files available at pilothobbies.com if you would like to print and build your own. If you're interested in micro FPV or micro track vehicles, also be sure to check out the Tiny Whip and Tiny Track groups on Facebook, linked below. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe, and happy building!